All right, convention will come to order. Welcome back. I recognize our secretary of convention, the Reverend Carrie Combs, to announce the result of our elections. Thank you, Madam President. In our elections, we have lost it on my screen. One moment, please. Uh -huh. We've elected to the standing committee for the lay order, Ms. June Aziz and Mr. Tom Hager. For the clerical order, the Reverend Shancia Jarrett and the Reverend Don Burr. And to the mission council, Valerie Stanley, the Reverend Tuesday Roop, the Reverend Justin Crisp, and Ms. Carolyn Nicolades. And our delegate to province one is Lisa Yarber. The uh, slate voting for cathedral chapter, disciplinary board, Camp Washington board, and the commission on ministry all passed. Thank you everyone for voting and congratulations to those who are willing to offer their gift. Thank you to all those who are willing to offer their gifts in service of God's mission in Connecticut in this way and congratulations to those who will be joining the team. Outstanding, Carrie. Thank you so much. Bishop Ian would like to make a comment. Thank you, Carrie. Just one little note. Lisa Yarber is our new additional delegate to Province One because Province One changed its canons, allowing for three delegates from each diocese. And our other two delegates are Barbara Casey and the Reverend Sandra Kosman. So Lisa joins Barbara and Sandra. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you, Ian. And, and thank you, everyone, everyone who's elected, everyone who offered themselves for service as we continue to deepen our participation in God's mission. I now recognize Secretary Cosman for another resolution. Thank you, Madam President. I uh, move the adoption of resolution six entitled Evangelism of and by Young Adults, Faithfulness to God's Mission into the Future. Okay, hey, thank you very much. The question before you is resolution six entitled Evangelism of and by Young Adults, Faithfulness to God's Mission into the Future. Is there a second? We'll do this the way that Bishop Ian began it. Um, so I need to be able to find my, Mo Letterman says she offers a second. It's been moved and seconded. I recognize the Reverend Helena Martin who will be speaking in favor of the resolution. Hi everyone, can you see and hear me? Here you are. There we go, hi, can you hear me? I see that you can see me, but you can't, can you hear we me? We can hear you. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, I'm so sorry. Hi everyone. I'm Helena Martin, priest in charge of St. Paul's in Southington and bona fide young person, at least by church standards. <laughs> I'm speaking today as a sponsor of Resolution 6 and also as a co-convener of the Young Adult Task Force, which our, commission, uh, our convention commissioned back in 2019. At that convention, you all recognized the crisis of young adult exclusion from our common life. And young adults for our purposes today means folks ages 18 to 39. And you charged us to bring back specific proposals for evangelism of young adults in ECCT. So we reported to 2020 convention with a video of young adult voices from around the diocese. And then we worked with a researcher to create a written report which we submitted to convention this year. So people assume that young adults don't want church, but we found in our research that young adults want to lead lives that make a difference, want to feel connected to something bigger than ourselves, want to know Jesus. And our report, which I commend to your careful consideration, makes specific recommendations for how ECCT can serve and serve alongside young adults. Given the current time of transition in our diocese, we're not asking for anything like programmatic or staffing solutions in our resolution. Instead, we're asking this assembled body to make two strong statements. So one, that ECCT should make ministry for and with young adults a true priority. And this also asks the Bishop Transition Committee to make this priority clear in its search for candidates. And two, to approve our findings and recommendations in concept to be revisited in earnest by our next Bishop Diocesan. We're convinced that God is already at work in the lives and worlds of young adults. 
So today we're asking you to join this movement of the Holy Spirit and say yes, yes, that we collectively here are committed to including young adults in the body of Christ. Yes, that we wanna prioritize this work going forward. Yes, to God's invitation to share the good news of Christ with everyone. Thank you. Yes, that was two minutes. Thank you, Helena. <laughs> well I did done. it. Is there further discussion of resolution six? I invite you to raise your Zoom hand if you have any additional. Seeing no hands raised, the question before us this is the adoption of resolution six entitled Evangelism of and by Young Adults, Faithfulness to God's Mission into the Future. Please cast your vote now by responding to the poll. We'll close the vote in about 45 seconds. Voting has closed and it passes 99% with two people voting no. Thank you very much. Thank you for everyone who voted. Thank you for the faithful work. I do commend the report to you. It really is truly outstanding, the young adult report that you can find online. Resolution is adopted. I recognize Secretary Cosman for another resolution. Thank you, Madam President. I move the adoption of resolution number seven entitled addressing racism within title four complaints and processes. The question before you is resolution four entitled addressing racism within title four complaints and processes. Is there a second? Raise your zoom hand and note in the chat. I see Whitney notes in the chat and raises her zoom hand. I'll take that as a second. Thank you, Whitney. The motion has been moved and seconded. I recognize the Reverend Daryl Burke and Ms. Julie Ayer, sponsors of the resolution, will speak in favor of it for two minutes. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Julie Ayer. I'm a lay delegate from St. Paul's in Huntington, Connecticut. I come before you today to introduce Resolution 7. To understand Resolution 7, you must be familiar with Title IV. Title IV is the section of the Episcopal Church's canons that addresses grounds and processes for discipline of clergy when a complaint is brought forward. At present, the current Title IV process used to explore complaints seems to lack a method to determine the impact of racism. The experience of racism is well documented in a recent study conducted by the Episcopal Church. Since data exists that shows us that systemic racism exists in our predominantly white church, we urge the church to take initiative in exploring how racism and other biases might have the potential to unwittingly further oppression in processes such as Title IV. While Title IV is governed by the canons of the Episcopal Church, which is beyond the scope of this convention, the intent of Resolution 7 is to formulate a task force, a task force that will study the Title IV process and suggest ways to address possible bias in the Title IV process in the context of our diocese. The Committee on Faith and Order of our diocese has affirmed that this resolution works within the legal parameters of our church. Thank you, Julie. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is there further discussion of resolution seven? Please raise your Zoom hand. Peggy Hodgkins. Hi, um, my name is Peggy Hodgkins. I'm the rector of Trinity Church in Southport, Connecticut. Um, I speak in favor of this resolution as an effort to uh, bring deeper understanding into our Title IV process. I'm a member of the Title IV committee and I 
uh, hope that you will vote for this resolution. Thanks. Thank you, Peggy. No Trinity Church, Portland, Connecticut. Good afternoon, I'm Reverend Darrell Burt, priest in charge of Trinity Church, Portland. And we bring this resolution to the floor in an effort to ensure that the Episcopal Church in Connecticut does everything in its power to ascertain and to ensure that all members of the clergy are treated in a manner that's equitable and without regard for gender, gender identification or race. These are groups which are often marginalized and viewed as the other. While we willingly cite the racism and sexism and all of those other isms that are endemic to the larger society, we're often too blind to them when they occur within our own church. So often members of the clergy are viewed as the other by those whom they serve or by others in the larger community. Thus, they are never fully accepted because of this otherness. Consequently, these differences in identification, worldview and background are never fully understood stood by the majority group and can become barriers to the reconciling love, which draws us closer together and serves as a bridge to our differences as our God expects us. The resolution seeks to endure, ensure that such bridges of love continue to unite us and do not serve as the basis for barriers which separate and divide us. Through such a task force, we seek to understand the manner in which the Episcopal Church in Connecticut is or is not providing opportunities for equitable treatment for all those who are too often marginalized, as well as for all clergy in the Episcopal Church in Connecticut. It is in this way that we remain true to that which the presiding bishop has espoused as being one in love and being Christians and doing good by that as we seek to hold true to making real God's beloved community. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you very much. Are there other, I know Taylor Albright. I'm Taylor Albright, the rector of Trinity Church in Terraville. And I'm also an advisor on the Title IV and the Title IV group. Uh, most of us really don't deal with Title IV in our day-to-day -day church experience, and which is probably a good thing because we don't, aren't looking forward to having to deal with issues of investigations and uh, difficulties that have come up in this way. The process itself is handled with intentional confidentiality. A lot of the communication is considered privileged. Uh, very small groups of people are involved in some of these decisions at various places. And because of that, and because of our increased awareness of our own, perhaps our unawareness of our own biases and innate racism, I would think given the weight of the decisions that are made on Title IV, this would be one of the areas we would want to actually look at uh, with the closest eye, uh, given um, just the way the process works and uh, the weight of the decisions that are made. Thank you, Taylor. Others that would speak to the resolution? Sensing no further discussion. The question before us is to adopt resolution seven entitled addressing racism within title four complaints and processes. Please cast your vote now by responding to the poll. We'll close the poll in about 45 seconds. Ninety-two percent vote in favor. Eight percent vote uh, not in favor. The resolution is adopted. Well, gosh, here we go. Thank you. 
That concludes our consideration of resolutions. Bishop Eden will now resume the chair to preside over the conclusion of our annual convention. Thank you, Laura. Um, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. I'm very pleased that we've managed to complete all of our work in the time allotted. I'll be honest with you, when I was beginning my address about an hour and a half late, I didn't think we'd be here right now. So I thank God and I thank all of you for the uh, stick to and the hard work put in today in this convention. Uh, you know, still having over 400 delegates participating at this late hour is a wonderful testimony to the, the really commitment that we have to be the body of Christ together in the Episcopal Church here in Connecticut. I want to thank members who are at this head table, our secretary, Secretary of uh, Convention, Carrie Combs, Secretary of the Diocese, Sandra Kosman, our always uh, wonderful and wise Chancellor Brad Babbitt and Bishop Laura. It's an honor and pleasure to be here. I want to thank the cathedral and the cathedral staff for accommodating us and specifically Dean Lena for uh, the incredible hospitality shown to all of us here today. Everyone who have contributed so much to making this convention work, um, the members of the worship team and worship committee that put together the service this morning for Bishop Laura, for your words during the, the service, they were, you know, this time of trauma, so encouraging and centering us in Jesus. Thank you. I want to thank Marianne Vogel, our, our cathedral um, director of music, and for all the work that she and her team put together um, in order to bring us that worship. And Tuesday, Roop, the co-chair with Dean Lena. And I want to give a big shout out to our tech team, to Jazzery Peralta, our, our canon for media and communications, for uh, Stacy Cole, our assistant, and for sitting in also from the Southeast, Adam Thomas. Um, what a great team. Uh, it's, we've managed to do it, and I just wanted to say thank you for uh, all that you have done to make this day such a wonderful blessing and a success. Um, I kind of want to keep on talking because I don't want my last convention to end, but I, it will. So I wonder if we can stand together and say the Lord's Prayer. You at home, pray along with us. We'll pray it in unison here, and then I'll go to the same. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the 237th Annual Convention of the Episcopal Church in Connecticut. So moved. So moved. Is there a second? second? I hear a second. The 237th Convention is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.